Okay, everyone, welcome back. This week, we are going to be continuing our discussion of classification. So we'll still be on our classification case study. And today, we'll be thinking about two very fundamentally different types of models to that we could approach learning tasks. In this video, I'm going to introduce the first model called Naive Bayes. And in class today, I'll talk about this other type of model called Decision Trees. And both are very popular kind of models in this classification space uh, for different reasons. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about why we're talking about these now and how they're a bit different than what we've seen so far. So as a reminder, so far in class, when we're considering classification, we've been trying to learn probabilities. So remember, we are trying to learn the probability that Y is some label given the input data we saw. And we're sort of trying to get an estimate of what we think this prob conditional probability is, conditioning on what the inputs we have, what's the probability of it seeing Y being positive or negative. Um, and so our probability classifier predicts what's the probability of seeing this label for this input. And then we said something like if the probability is more than 0.5, then output a prediction of plus one, otherwise output a prediction of minus one. And we liked this kind of way of trying to model a task because it made our model interpretable. We understand these probabilistic outputs. And as a reminder of how we came up with these probabilities, we used a linear classifier. We, we learned coefficients that let us compute a score, and that score was gonna be a real number between negative infinity and infinity. And then with that score, we then used a sigmoid function to squeeze it down to numbers between zero and one. Zero being unlikely, it uh, has the class plus one, one being very likely. So we're, we're using this function to transform what's the probability of seeing the positive class. You could always figure out what's the probability of the negative class by taking one minus that. Now, this all worked well. We talked about this last week. Logistic regression is great. What we're going to do now is we're going to try to approach this problem from a very different perspective than logistic regression does. Um, so today, what we're going to talk about, or at least in this video, is we're going to talk about this thing called naive Bayes, which just takes a very different view of how the world works and what it's actually trying to model. And at the end of this video, I'll talk a little bit about why I chose naive Bayes in particular as this other type of model that we want to discuss. So here's the big idea for what naive Bayes is going to be. So we're going to have a sentence like, the sushi and everything else was awesome. And we'll, what we're gonna try to do is compute, well, what's the probability of this, uh, the sentiment of this review being positive given this value, uh, given this input versus what's the probability of it's negative. Now, at a high level, this means that they aren't really doing anything different than logistic regression. Remember with logistic regression, we were just also trying to compute this probability. But what we're going to do differently is how we actually compute these probabilities. Where logistic regression tried to learn a linear classifier, we're going to do something slightly different with naive Bayes. We're going to try to model this task differently. The high level idea of how we're going to do this differently is when trying to select which class is more likely, positive or negative, we're actually going to try to model directly how positive sentiment sentences look versus negative ones. So rather trying to say, given this sentence, how likely is it to be a positive review? We're going to look at how likely is it to see the sentence in positive review sentiments versus in negative review sentiments. That sounds kind of weird and tricky right now. We'll explore what this means. What this is essentially doing is going to be using this thing called Bayes rule to switch around conditional. So we've been thinking about conditional statements of the form, what's the probability of A given B. In this, our context, what's the probability of sentiment plus one given this sentence? What we're going to be interested in doing is trying to flip this around, asking what's the probability of B given A? And you can't just say these two things are equal. In general, the probability of A given B is not equal to the probability of B given A. These are just very, they're, while similar, ask slightly different questions about the world. One is saying, what happens when, if you know B, what's the probability of saying A? And the other one saying, what's the probability of saying B if you know A happened? Now, what we'll use is that in general, these aren't equal, but there is a very clever theorem called Bayes rule that lets you 
use something like this, but you have to be careful with how you multiply by some constant. So in general, the probability of A given B will be equal to the probability of B given A times some extra constant. The probability of A, and then divide by the probability. We're not gonna prove Bayes' rule in this class. This is just a, it's a mathematical theorem that you might see in um, uh, other probability courses. We're just gonna use this as a formula that I've just given you that lets you flip conditioning. If you ever wanna compute a probability that's conditional, you could always turn it around using Bayes' rule because sometimes it might be easier to compute something, some other statistic you might have. So in the context of this kind of classification, what Bayes' rule says is the probability that you're, you have a positive sentiment, given your sentence, is going to be equal to the probability of seeing this sentence given it's positive times the probability it's positive divided by the probability of seeing that sentence. So again, these are just computing numbers, so I'll talk about how you compute them. But what Bayes' rule is saying is, in this context is, if we want to compute the probability of given this sentence, what's, what's the probability it's positive? We're going to flip this around and say, what's the probability of seeing this sentence if we are considering positive reviews? And we'll just do this kind of computation for both the positive and the negative and see which one's more likely. Now, again, at a high level, they're still trying to compute what is the probability of positive sentiment given the sentence, but the formula we use to do it is going to look different in naive Bayes. We're not going to learn a linear classifier with coefficients. We're going to do something slightly different. Now, one thing, and then to make this slightly more concrete, just substituting a sentence in for x's, we're considering what's the probability of seeing this sentence, the sushi and everything else was awesome, if we're considering just positive sentiment sentences. So of the positive sentiment sentences, how likely is it to see this one sentence? And we'll do this for the negative as well and see which one of these probabilities is more likely. Now, one thing to note about this that's a bit confusing at first, but we'll just kind of have to take this as a given. Almost always, I don't actually care about this denominator in the context of naive base. So we actually almost always will omit the denominator. Note that the denominator is the same for both uh, the probability of y equals plus 1 and the probability of y equals negative 1 given x. This will be the probability of x given y equals negative 1 times the probability y equals negative 1 divided by the probability. Same Bayes rule, but now we're just talking about the probability of being negative 1. Well, in this context, both, both terms have the same denominator, so we don't really need to compute them. Uh, because if I'm just going to compare these two numbers, they're going to be divided by the same. So really, I just care about the numerators. In naive Bayes, I almost always drop the denominator. That means we're not going to find the exact numeric value of the probability. We care about the relative magnitude. We care about which probability seems more likely. So we drop that denominator for simplicity. So almost always, you'll just see us be computing the numerator all over the place in, in Bayes rule, or sorry, in naive Bayes, because we don't really care about denominators in context. The denominators are the same throughout all of our classes, and so we can just drop it for So that might not be a perfect explanation of why we drop it, but I just promise you we do drop this, um, and so I don't want this to confuse you when we are, we're dropping this denominator all over the place. Okay, so now, this is this idea of trying to use Bayes' rule to flip around probabilities. I haven't told you how to compute any of those probabilities because there's a big complication and one that we need to uh, solve. So in particular, when I'm trying to select which class is the most likely, I was going to compute this, like, what's the probability of seeing this sentence if, uh, in my positive reviews. But most sentences are novel sentences, meaning I might not have seen this sentence before. Most ways of counting probabilities is just look at your data set, see how many times did I see this in my positive sentences versus how many times did I see it in my negative sentence. But most reviews might be novel, that you might have never seen a sentence exactly like that one before, which makes this notion of counting and probabilities really, really tricky. So in general, we have to make an assumption about how the world works so that we can make this problem simple enough to tackle. 
And so we're going to make a very, very oversimplifying uh, assumption, which is that words are independent of each other. Meaning that if you see um, something like the sushi and everything else is awesome in your sentence, knowing that everything was one word in the sentence doesn't tell you anything about what the next word should be. This is entirely an unrealistic assumption. This is why we call this the naive assumption. It's just assuming that sentences are completely random and they have no formal structure, which is completely wrong, but turns out to work decently well in practice in some context and the context that we'll be talking about today. So a naive Bayes is an overly simplified model, making the naive assumption that words don't depend on each other within the sentence. Which then means if we're trying to compute what is the probability of seeing this sentence, if we are considering positive sentiments, then what we'll do is using independence, break up this probability into some products. The probability of seeing this sentence will be equal to the probability of seeing the times the probability of seeing sushi times the probability of seeing and times the probability of seeing everything and so on. This is something you could do when you know your random variables are independent. The probability of getting a heads followed by a tails, if they're independent, is just the probability of heads times the probability of tails. But it, in general, this kind of product rule only applies in the case of independence. If your events are dependent, you can say nothing about that probability in terms of products, but we're making this overly simplistic assumption and just assuming all the words are independent of each other, which means we're just going to model this as this product of probabilities. And I'll get back to in one second how to compute. Whoops. But that's the big idea. The naive assumption. So we, we've had two big ideas. The Bayes rule idea was if you want to compute the probability of positive sentiment given a sentence, flip that question around. Ask what's the probability of seeing this sentence given its positive sentiment scaled by some other by some other the second key idea in naive bays is the naive part so we talked about the bays part and now we're talking about the naive part the naive part is saying if you want to compute the probability of a sentence break it up into seeing all the individual probabilities of its words multiplied together we're assuming that there's no relationship between words and the sentence which again is an overly simplifying assumption so what i haven't told you what we need to tackle next is how do you actually compute this probability of seeing the word was if you know the label's positive? And then also, how do you compute the probability that the label's positive? Those are two types of probabilities we need to compute. So how do we compute something like the probability that Y um, itself is positive? So this is not a conditional question. This was, uh, you remember we had to multiply by what's the probability of it being positive? Nothing about the words or the sentences. Well, this will just be well, the number of positive reviews in my data set divided by the number of reviews in total. If most of my reviews are positive reviews, then I might have some kind of strong belief that most reviews are positive. And so that's actually why in that Bayes rule, we have to multiply by this kind of probability of y being equal to plus one. We're trying to weight by this thing called a prior. We don't, we, I don't really care if you know that term prior, but that's kind of where this Bayes rule is coming from. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, well, I need in, in this computation, I need to know what's the probability that y is equal to plus one. And I'm going to model that as just, well, what's the fraction of my data set that is positive review? That's only one probability term we have to compute. We also need to compute what's the probability of seeing a word given its positive sentence. That's the kind of second thing I need to compute here. So how do I compute something like what's the probability of seeing the word awesome if I'm only looking at positive sentiment? Well, the way we do this is it's also just a count. This will be equal number of times, number of times awesome. in positive reviews divided by 
number of words in all positive reviews. The intuition here is it, we're asking the question, what's the probability if I have a positive review, it has the word awesome in it. And the way we can count that is just the number of times awesome appears in positive reviews divided by all the words and positive or the number of words in positive reviews. And that will give me what is my probability of thinking this word is in here. And now we can start the reason we do this computation is this helps us identify what do positive reviews look like in some sense? We're trying to model what is the likelihood of seeing this word given I'm dealing with a positive review. And I'm kind of in some sense trying to model what I believe positive reviews look like and use that model to help us identify what's more likely for the sentence to belong. Is it more likely to be positive or is it more likely for it to be negative? So going back now, and I have this animation, I have to go back a couple times. We now can see that naive Bayes is really just counting in fraction. We start with Bayes rule to give us this flipping of conditions. And then to compute this, these probabilities, we have a tool to compute this probability. It's just the number of positive reviews divided by the total number of reviews. And when we wanna compute the probability of seeing the sentence given it was positive, but we use the naive assumption to break it up into the product of these individual probabilities. And then these are also just counts. The number of times I saw this word in, uh, in my positive reviews divided by the number of words in my positive review. Okay, that's naive base. It's just frequencies and fractions and a bunch of products. Now, there are a couple... Um, caveats here that I'll need to talk about, but, and I'll also get to this question of why. Second, you might be wondering, okay, this seems overly confusing. Why don't we just use logistic regression? Why is this possibly better? And it's not necessarily better. It's just a different model. It's not trying to learn coefficients, or it's not trying to learn this kind of linear classifier. It's taking a bunch of fractions or counts in your data set and using that to estimate probabilities. So it's just a different approach to solving a problem. Okay. But before I kind of compare naive based logistic regression, I want to talk about one uh, subtlety that we generally need to think about with naive Bayes. Remember before when we were talking about maximum likelihood estimation, I was talking about multiplying probabilities together it can get a little iffy with co computers because only have precise measurements of like uh, fractions. So generally when you have naive Bayes and you're multiplying all these probabilities together, numbers get really small really fast, which is hard for computers to represent. Um, additionally, if in our data set we didn't have a particular word, like for example, suppose I didn't have the word sushi in my data set, then one of these probabilities being zero makes the whole thing zero because zero times anything is zero which then throws a whole wrench into them because it's totally possible to have new words. So there's generally two solutions that, that could be used together or separately that people generally use to solve these two problems. One, like we saw before, generally we take a log of this. Remember the log of a product turns into the sum of the logs. And this is useful computationally. And also we can sometimes cheat in definitions Commonly, in particular with naive Bayes, whenever you take the log of zero, machine learning people generally think of that as being exactly zero. The log of zero is actually undefined. It's, uh, it goes towards negative infinity as it gets really, really small. But generally, for simplicity, we like to just say, oh, log of zero, we're just going to call that zero and just ignore it entirely. So that's one way of getting around this, is just turning this into a bunch of sums and then dropping any zero. Totally, totally allowed. Um, another way, uh, approach that we won't talk about too much, but is commonly used in practice, is to use this technique called Laplace smooth, Laplacean smooth. The idea is always use at least some constant number of, for a count of a word, even if you never saw it before. The idea being, even if you would say that the probability of seeing the word sushi was zero out of 100, always transform that to at least be one out of 100. Like, don't ever let zero be a probability. 
in some sense, put some prior belief that every word at least has some small, very small likelihood. And what number do you use as your default? Yet another hyperparameter. Generally, people use something small. But you could use other things and different choices lead to different models, just like all our discussion. So that's one thing I just wanted you to remember or know about Naive Bayes, or if you ever see it talked about online, is almost always they're taking logs and sums rather than products. Um, and this Laplace smoothing is trying to remove zero terms and to put at least some default value for every probability. Okay, so now I want to get at this big question of why. Why naive Bayes when logistic regressions do to just fine? To help you conceptualize how they compare and how they're different, I put both formulas for these things uh, on this slide. So for logistic regression, remember we said we had this like word, uh, we had this vector of word counts, and we learned some coefficients w, and then we use the sigmoid function applied to the score, or being w transpose h of x, or however we defined our features. And then that number gets fed into the sigmoid to turn it to a number between 0 and 1. So it's enforcing structure on how it believes the world works. It believes the world follows a linear function that then we feed into a sigmoid to get probabilities. Naive Bayes takes a very different view of how we compute this probability. It says the probability of seeing this output y, given a sequence of words, is just the product of that word given the, the label we're considering times the probability of saying that label. This is the succinct way of writing out that long probability statement I had before. It's the, pro the probability of saying a positive sentiment given the sequence of words is equal to the probability of positive overall times this product of conditional probabilities. And again, we sometimes figure this out by computing logs and sums, but it's the same idea. One isn't more right than another. They just take different stances on how to compute these probabilities. And the reason I bring up Naive Bayes in particular is one, it's a very simplistic model, so it could generally serve as a good baseline. You generally don't have to tune a lot of hyperparameters for this thing, and training it's pretty straightforward because it's just counting fractions. So it's actually a nice baseline model in some sense, this naive base, and you might find it actually works incredibly well in practice in some context. Many spam classifiers actually use naive bays, and it works quite well. But the reason I wanted to introduce naive bays right now is actually to compare kind of the style of how it models probabilities and how this differs from logistic regression and naive bays. So both of these models actually fall into different classes of how we think about how machine learning should work. There's kind of two camps of models, and each one is an example of a different type of these camps or classes. So one type of model is what we'd call a generative model. A generative model is one that tries to describe how inputs are made from the label. I'll show you a picture that tries to make this a little bit clear. But what we're really doing in generative models is trying to learn how do positive sentiment sentences behave and how do negative sentiment sentences behave and then trying to use my understanding of the world to figure out is this review more likely to be positive or more likely to be negative. So this is a style of learning is you're really trying to model how you believe the classes work. But on the other hand, this isn't the only way to approach learning. We saw with logistic regression, what we're really optimizing for is not understanding how the classes work, but understanding how to separate the classes. In this case, we call logistic regression a discriminative classifier. It's one that doesn't necessarily try to figure out how do positive sentiment sentences work overall, it's just trying to say, can I find a dividing line between these two classes? So discriminative classifiers are really focused on finding these decision boundaries. It's really focused on trying to find this kind of separator between examples that are positive and examples that are negative. Whereas generative classifiers, 
are trying to actually model how they believe these classes work and then use the understanding from that model to make classifications. So they're trying to actually look at how do positive sentiment sentences work? How do negative sentiment sentences work? And that's why in these generative cases, we were always computing the probability of X given Y times the probability of Y. We're saying, what's the probability of seeing this data point if it were positive times the probability it was positive. Whereas the discriminative classifier is really just trying to learn this kind of probability directly through some kind of coefficients or, or a separator. There's nothing inherently better or worse about one of these approaches. They just ask different problems and the statistics they compute are separate. That discriminative classifiers do not care about what's the probability of seeing this sentence if it were positive. It's really just asking for this sentence, is it more likely to be positive or negative by modeling a decision boundary? Whereas the generative case is really trying to understand the underlying problem. Now, these come with trade-offs. Generally, not always, discriminative classifiers tend to perform better in terms of accuracy because they aren't trying to learn a ton about the world. They're really just trying to learn how to separate. That means for a given data set, you could generally get better performance for discriminative classifiers. Ge again, huge generality. There's lots of examples where generative is better. Generative classifiers do well when you're trying to model how you believe the world works. And it actually tends to lead to some interpretation or it leads to some cases where you can interpret better because you have this modeling of how the world works. In fact, one place generative classifiers are really useful for is then helping you generate more data. That you now have an idea of how the world works, you might now be able to generate more data to help test assumptions where discriminative classifiers cannot generate data. They don't know or don't make assumption or sorry, they don't make beliefs about how the world works. That you could then make new examples from. They don't try to model these class probabilities. They're really just trying to find discriminating lines. So there is generally this kind of trade-off in types of approaches to learning. And we'll see kind of throughout the quarter how some of these approaches that really just try to learn lines versus the approaches that truly try to understand the underlying probabilities can make different trade-offs in terms of either efficiency or accuracy or how you interpret them. But I wanted to introduce this terminology because this notion of generative versus discriminative is something that pops up in terminology quite frequently when thinking about machine. So for this video, that's all we have. This is actually pretty much all we're gonna talk about in terms of naive Bayes uh, for today. In today's class, we're really gonna talk about a different type of model called a uh, decision tree. It's a different type of discriminative model that tries to learn uh, decision boundaries in a very, very different way than logistic regression does. And that's what we're going to spend all of our time in class kind of discussing.